Okay, installing the accumulator with the one spring TCI provided and piston in upside down like they said to do. I went ahead and uh, put uh, ATF on this gasket for the pan. I hope that wasn't a mistake. The other gasket had no sealer on it, so I decided to do the same because uh, I hate putting sealer on when it's not necessary. So, we'll get these torqued down and you can see I went ahead and put in the TCI transmission bolt, drain bolt plug here. I glued it on good, torqued it on pretty tight. It's got a plastic washer so you have to be careful. I'm going to use a little Teflon on the uh, actual drain bolt here. And you can see I have an energy suspension mount on the back. They don't uh, list the part number in their book for my car, 95Z28, but it uh, has to do with the height of the mount. But I checked the dimensions for this one against the old one. It's two inches high. I went ahead and bought the mount and put it on. We'll see if it's going to work for me. I recommend you get the DVD off of YouTube. Get yourself a manual. I use the uh, SA Design one. and. Another thing is a Sonax book. Get one from your transmission parts guy. Great book. Shows a lot of what the uh, a lot of other other fixes for your valve body and what some of the valves are. And uh, the necessary tools. So next we will see if I will enjoy any of the fruits of my labors. Okay, so here you have it. There's all the used parts that came out of the trance. along with some of the unused parts from the kit. There's the Rube Goldberg polar contraption. Came in handy for compressing those springs as well as the other half of this Pontiac door hinge which was used for a bearing and a bushing driver. There's your TCI and your Transco instructions. Your shop manual along with that Sonax book and the DVD few of the tools needed, a few snap ring pliers, selection of small screwdrivers. I suggest a good blowgun, something better than this. A little hook device which came in very handy. And of course a checklist of all kinds of aspects to this job. So I would suggest maybe a better puller. A better selection of uh, snap ring pliers, including the ones with the flat ends, which I don't have. A nice blow gun with a rubber tip on it would be great for checking all the clutch packs. And of course you need all your hand tools. And some trans gel. So there's the very, very basics required. All right, I'm shoving this tranny back in. I thought I might mention a few things about R&R &R while I was at all of this. To start off with, in the very beginning, trying to pull this transmission out, I ran into the problem that others have had, trying to get those case bolts out from the engine that hold the transmission in, and those factory torques that are sometime done. I got down to that last bolt and just would, could not get it out, an upper bolt. And uh, rounding off the edges and everything, it's looking like it's going to be an impossible job. I ended up going to Sears and buying myself a set of metric half inch drive sockets, the kind that grab the flats of the bolt instead of on the corners. And that's what it took. I had to hammer it onto the thing and really uh, put the torque to it with a, a long bar and a long extension. And I finally got it loose. So think about that. Of course I never recommend doing this on your own but in this day and age I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that are going to face with this very proposition. If you are I would suggest that you find a friend. I don't care if he doesn't know anything about cars. Bribe him. Coerce him. Pay him come help you with some of this. It make the job a lot easier or even enable you to even get the job done at all. So now I've got the transmission back up in there 
And another thing I've done is I've cleaned up all my parts. If you ever uh, anticipate getting back underneath your car like I do, it's a whole lot nicer when the stuff is cleaned up. And it's also a lot nicer to keep it that way once you do it. So I scrubbed off 100,000 plus miles of grime off my parts before I put them back in. Makes it a little nicer. In order to get this transmission up in here, I had to use some blocks of wood, a couple little jacks, a lot of tilting and everything else. Get it up there and finally get it to where I could slide it up onto this floor jack and then strap it down. And then jack it up in place very carefully and get it up in there. It was a trick. So I cleaned it up while I had it out, so it'll be okay. It'll all work out. I hope. We'll find out soon. Okay. Moving a tattoo, they don't want more. Until this year, really had nothing. Lost the speedometer, what happened? And then I discovered Wrecking Ball. It's an easy three step daily Here we go. system. Just a few months, the darkest, it's working. deepest pigments. All right. Easily start to fade without anything. Okay, it just shifted through the gears, and it looks like I achieved a torque converter lockup as well here, here up on the jack stands. So far, so good. Okay, here we are in neutral. And there we go. Alrighty then, here's where we give the test. Neutral, in gear. Here goes the test. This is where we find out if everything works. probably on part four or five on YouTube or Street Fire or somewhere and you're probably contemplating your own journey rebuilding the 4L60E. I'll have to say that now a couple months have gone by and uh, everything has lived up to everything I ever hoped it would have. I don't have any complaints. I did minimal sanding, left out that accumulator ball, put that hyperloop in there and, and got her going. I uh, didn't change any electronics in the transmission. Uh, I didn't uh, get a new torque converter. I just drained it out. I didn't have it flushed. I flushed my cooling lines and all that. And uh, she's been running good ever since. So you know, this trans had about uh, 100,000 miles on it. And uh, all the clearances on the pins and uh, accumulator valves and, and valves and so forth were decent and uh, it worked out great. So really the only complaint, if you want to call this a complaint, uh, was uh, racing it. I found out on the uh, drag strip on the 1-2 shift, the shift comes in so hard that it breaks the tires loose. and uh, So that affected my uh, consistency trying to bracket race the car. So I was trying to use my Corvette tires. So that's one thing to consider if you're a bracket racer. But of course I set this thing to shift hard and I wanted it to and it does. So I'll live with it. So I'll say that I was able to do this for uh, a cost in the neighborhood of around 350 bucks or so for the TCI kit and uh, the few uh, hard parts and uh, fluid and things that I bought for it. So uh, I'm happy with that. Considering the uh, transmission, uh, the same transmission is sold by TCI for around 2500 bucks, the TCI Street Fighter. So, if this does you any good, do I just leave a comment? And lots of ruck. Later.